everyone to an all-new reaction and review. Tonight, guys, I'm checking out a German animated film from 1994. That movie is Fella Day. Now, as I've stated in previous reviews, Fella Day is one of those movies a lot of you guys have wanted me to cover. And I have, in fact, been in, I've been very interested in watching it. And I really wanted to get I really wanted to get my hands on a US released DVD or Blu-ray disc of some kind. I guess just that way I had like a visual aid I could hold up. Um, and after doing all my searching for that, after trying to find that, uh, at least as far as I can tell, there has never been a US release of this film, which kind of sucks. So Barring that, I've had to turn to YouTube, where somebody has uploaded the, in, the entire film with an English dub that apparently came off of a Region 2 DVD. So, I get to see the film in English. I don't have the single foggiest fucking clue as to what the plot is, because the only thing anyone's ever told me is that it has to do with cats, it's gory as shit, which is made even weirder because it's an animated film, um, but nobody's given me any other details beyond that, outside of it has cats and it's gory as shit. And just on a personal note, I really do like cats and I do like gory, gory films, so perhaps maybe this will be like a match made, match made in heaven? Maybe? Perhaps? I have no fucking clue. Guys, I have no idea if this thing is going to be any, any good at all, and the only way I'm gonna find out is if I shut up and I push play, and I'm gonna do that right now. So, without further ado, it's time to kick back, relax, and check out Fella Day. You know, guys, I'm really getting into the story, but there's one little detail that is kind of bothering me a little bit. It's really cool to have a whole lot of detail in your, you know, in your, you know, animation. Is there a reason why we need to have clearly visible anuses on every single one of these cats and the camera seems to like to focus on it whenever the cat is walking past shot? It's kind of sort of fucked up. The movie itself so far, really good. Just that one little detail is a little bit nasty. Okay. Felicity's death was a little bit more violent than I was really than, than I was really expecting. It kind of sucks too because in the short time that we got to know the character, I was really kind of sort of kind of sort of digging her. But that was also the bloodiest corpse we've had in this whole movie, and it was ridiculously sick. You know, guys, out of all the kills in this film so far. This one is probably the most disgusting, because one of our victims was a pregnant cat. They sliced open her belly so all the little kitten fetuses are spread out next to the corpse. And it's absolutely disgusting. Okay, also wasn't really expecting a full-blown feline sex scene. That's... different. And they both climax at once. That's good to know. That was odd. Okay, that honestly is just fighting, fighting fucking dirty. So we are up to the final fight between Francis and our and our feline serial serial fucking killer. And during the fight, Francis went went and bit went and went and bit our killer in, in the fucking balls. I don't care how many cats he's killed. If you have to bite your opponent in the balls, that honestly is just fighting dirty, man. That's just... Wow, that just... I was not expecting that, guys. Well, guys, that was Fella Day. Let me shut that off. Okay. <sighs> that was actually a lot better than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we start with the uh, writing? Now, as I said at the very start of this, I had no idea what the hell kind of movie I was getting myself into here. I know people had told me that it's bloody, it's gory, it's graphic, and it has something to do with house cats. And never got any details past that. Now, if people had told me that it was a hard-boiled, pulpy, noir-style murder mystery with house cats, I would have jumped at this fucker years and years ago <laughs> because that concept just sounds so out of left 
field that it almost has to work, and you know it actually kind of does. Uh, part of that has to do with the fact that our characters are written incredibly well. I really did. I really did like every single character, even characters who show up for like one scene. Uh, the one who still sticks with me is one of the one who sticks with me still is Felicity, who was a blind cat who we who we meet for one scene, and she winds up being the next victim and it's really and it really does kind of sort of get it, re it really does get you know to you because you really liked her in the one scene that you met her and they built her up and they gave her a whole lot of depth in like the two minutes that she's in the fucking film so when she is the next victim you actually do feel kind of sort of bad about it. Now, granted, that's one of the only victims that they actually build up in any real noticeable way. Uh, uh, well, I mean, they, I mean, well, they did build up, like, maybe two more. I really don't want to spoil much. Uh, but the other ones are all just, oh my god, look, it's another dead house cat. Which is fine early on when... When when our when our main character Francis is just starting to meet all the other cats in the neighborhood and the killings are still happening, at that point then it kind of makes sense that you wind up with victims that have no real background or depth or development. But it's when you get later on in the film when you're still getting random random kills instead of trying to instead of working with characters who've already been built in, uh, the whole thing just felt a little just just felt a little bit off. Um, but still, amazing movie uh, in terms of uh, in terms of murder murder mysteries. This sucker is written incredibly well, um, and and like I said, our characters here are incredibly deep, including the ones who you only see for a scene. Uh, a lot of our characters are built incredibly well, and it does help build this. And it does help build the world of Felidae, and it's going to keep you absolutely invested in this movie for its rather short hour and hour and fifteen minute runtime. You are going to be completely sucked into this thing, uh, and it is just going to keep you keep you rolling. Now, the acting. Uh, I stated at the start. I watched the English dub of this. Uh, in the little bit of research I did, I still didn't want any of the story spoiled for me. But found out that the English dub came off of a came off of a Region Two DVD, which was released over in in Europe. And in fact, the English dub's the only goddamn thing on the disc that's actually in English. Everything else is all in German. Um, I'm gonna tell you guys that dub. It's it's serviceable. It's not terrible. I'm not. I am not going to say that that the dub here straight up sucks because a lot of it is really well done. It's just it's just like a line here, a line there, a scene here, a scene there where it just doesn't work. At one point, at one point, Francis and his buddy Bluebeard are figuring out clues. Bluebeard is constantly pining after food. And he's talking about how he wants uh, fillets, cod fillets. No, I don't need you guys to to correct me. You know, and I know that the word is supposed to be the word is supposed to be fillet, but they kept calling it fillets for that entire scene. And I think they even mentioned it like two other times in the film. They still refer to it as fillets. And it just seemed a little bit weird. Now, it might just be because the cats have read it on the tins, but never actually heard their humans say it. And they might just be pronouncing it phonetically. I'm not sure. But it did seem a little bit off. And there and there are a couple of lines, especially from Bluebeard. I noticed that Bluebeard is the most, like, sketchy of the the uh, characters here in term in terms of acting because we will have certain scenes he sounds amazing and then we get to a scene and half and half of the dialogue is wooden as shit it's the same actor it's the same actor playing the same fucking character how the hell do you go from being really decent in all these scenes to borderline phoning it in for for all these other scenes now there are other actors who will turn in who will turn in something and it seems a little bit iffy from scene to scene or just 
the whole thing feels kind of sort of phoned in. But the one that stands out the most is, is Bluebeard because, because about 80% of his dialogue is done magnificently. It sounds amazing. And then that other 20%, it basically sounds as if the guy was thrown into the booth, was given the script about 30 seconds ago, and just told you get one take, go. And it just doesn't sound right. Now, the acting beyond the couple of little, like, hitches is really good. At some point, I'm going to have to probably watch the German dub. I mean, well, just the German audio, because it was dubbed in English. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to have to listen to, to the German audio. I want to know if the German audio is any good. I wouldn't totally know, because I don't speak, speak German. But still, it might sound a little bit more natural in a couple of scenes. Now, when it comes to dubbing a foreign film, one thing that you do have to be careful with is trying to match the mouth the, the mouth movements and it works for almost everybody except for one character there's one character absolutely shits the bed in terms of trying to match the mouth movements and that's kong kong is this gigantic fucking cat in the friggin in the friggin neighborhood with this gigantic underbite it looks just kind of off and he also is the most animated out of all of them whenever he speaks. So he has so he has this mouth that's just constantly like moving and flapping. And the actor is trying. God bless him, he's trying. But he also has to get out the line which is which is given. And you can't make that work sometimes. So you will have this line which is supposed to sound, you know, sad and tragic, and the mouth is still flapping you know, as, as if he was speaking dialogue, and he's weeping, because that's what the script called, called, called for, and they probably tried dozens of fucking takes to get up to a point of actual weeping in the video to make it work, but they couldn't. I'm just going to take a wild guess there. Um, that really, though, is just because of how the character was animated. You would have had a hard time trying to match trying to match English audio to that and make it totally work. And it and that does happen with a couple of other characters. It really it it really though is not a frequent issue. It's not something that's going to absolutely destroy the film, but it is something which is going to be kind of sort of noticeable and I do know that that sort of thing is one of those little little details that does have a habit of pulling certain certain people out. And even though I noticed it because I'm one of those weirdos who notices all all of this kind of shit, it honestly didn't bother me too much, except with Kong, because Kong's movements are so fucking are so fucking exaggerated that it's just a bit more noticeable with Kong, I guess. <laughs> so um, we got that animation. Let's talk about the animation. Uh, I absolutely loved. I loved the art style of this film. I love the way every character was drawn. Except for Kong, I'm gonna have to go back to Kong for just a second. Because he has that colossal fucking underbite, and it looks... So, and he has this weird fucking, like, hunchback. I've never seen a cat that looks like that. He actually he actually looks kind of sort of like what would happen if a house cat and a bulldog fucked, and that's what came out. It looks so off, especially compared to every other cat, who at least in some way looks kind of natural. They almost look like, well, except for the eyes. There's only one cat that actually has the traditional slit cat eyes, and that is, and that is Felicity. Every other cat seems to have the regular human dot, dot pupils, and it looks a little bit off on, on cats, I, I will say that. However, though, that is something which you do get used to. It would probably have looked a little bit creepier if the cats were all sporting traditional cat eyes in this thing because we're focusing on the cats a hell of a lot more than we're focusing on the humans. In fact, you see almost no humans in the entire film minus, let's see, Francis's owner, Francis's owner's friend, and the scientists who were torturing cats. Oh my fuck, I'm going to touch on that right now. This has to do with some of the content. Because I know, I know... I know that when some people see animated film, they think it's instantly for kids. Do not show this thing to children. I'm going to walk you through a scene. I'm going to walk you through a real small scene. And if you think that your kid is able to sit through this and not cringe, 
go right ahead then and show it to him because it's probably the nastiest thing in the entire fucking film and it made me fucking cringe. So, Francis finds this VHS tape and on it is footage of the of the science lab that I guess used to be in his house because the tape was found in the house. Just taking a wild guess, that was where the lab was. And um, they're trying to create some kind of like a serum that instantly heals wounds. So they have these cats like strapped down onto fucking tables, which as somebody who as so, as somebody who's a proud proud lover of cats, that just that right there already was making me a little little bit iffy. And then they shaved a patch off the back of the cat's head, sliced it open with a with with a scalpel. They they then took a drop of this acid based solution, dripped it in there, and you watch as the acid quickly fucking dissolves everything inside until you can see the brain and the front and, and the front of the skull not exactly pretty now if you think that your that, that, that your child is going to be able to see that as well as they'll see beheadings and dead kitten fetuses and a cat complete a cat cut so deep his guts are pouring out of his gut if you really think that you can sit through all of that without any problems at all then by all means, go right ahead and show this thing to your to your kids. Otherwise, probably not the best thing to show them, especially if they are incredibly young. It's probably going to scar them. Uh, and a lot of that, guys, is... And this still sort of ties into animation and art style because every single one of those shots would probably have not been as... They probably would not have been as effective. They wouldn't have been this fucking effective, rather... If the art style wasn't that good, there is so much detail here. So much so that, as I mentioned, there's a whole lot of shots of cat, of cat fucking buttholes, like, everywhere, and it's really one of those details we didn't totally need, guys, just saying. Um, but otherwise, like, everything else is just pure, pure rampant fucking gore, and... I mean, in, I mean, or, or I should say that when that, when the gore comes up... It is absolutely unforgiving, and it's not quite what I expected, because guys, I have seen a lot of fucked up shit in animated films, and I really thought I was set for anything. This is probably one of the goriest animated films I've seen, not counting garbage like Where the Dead Go to, Where the Dead Go to Die. I'm talking films that actually have a plot, actually have substance and structure and know how to handle their gore well. This sucker is probably the goriest I've seen, and it utilizes that beautifully. Um, our music, our music here, our score—it really does. It really does fit the kind of sort of like noir murder fucking mystery tone the film is trying to build, which I love. That was absolutely aces. Our sound mix here is really sound. Our color work here is good. Uh, everything, guys, about this movie is incredibly solid, minus the few small, small patches of really sketchy voice acting, and that can easily be fixed by watching it subtitled instead of dubbed in English. So even that is kind of a minor nothing you can just cast off to the side. Ultimately, guys, am I able to recommend Fella Day? I want you, well, I want you guys to sort of think about it this way. This movie has yet to be released in the United States on DVD or Blu-ray. The moment that it fucking does, I'm buying it. Does that happen to sound like enough of a recommendation? In fact, guys, fuck. The moment that I hear that this thing is going to get a U.S. fucking release, I'm pre-ordering the son of a bitch. This movie is amazing. This is one of the best murder, murder mysteries, well, at least one of the best animated murder mysteries I have ever seen. Which, granted, guys, is a little bit of a narrow, you know, group, but it's still worth mentioning. This movie is absolutely fantastic from start to finish. And I normally do not recommend piracy, but you can find this on YouTube. After all, that's where I just watched it from. And I am not going to provide you a link because, honestly, if I'm able to find it in about five seconds, then so can you. You just have to have the title and you're ready to fucking roll. Um, so, guys, by all means, go ahead, watch it. Watch it right now. In fact... Do me a favor, if you actually find the video I found, which is the high-quality English full movie, you know, version, please, I want you to leave a comment saying that I that I sent you there, because I'm probably going to watch this, this movie again in like six months, 
And I want to see how many comments are going to mention that. This movie is fantastic. In fact, hell, guys, um, like I said, I normally don't promote this sort of thing. I'm actually going to provide a link to this movie in, the, in this video's de description. You guys really do need to check this. You need to check this movie out. And if the studios and the filmmakers are not going to give us a legal, a legal version to watch in the U.S., then God damn it, we're going to watch it on fucking YouTube. Go over there, guys. Watch it. Watch it often. The fucking movie is fantastic. Now I... Really wish I had the damn thing on Blu-ray, because I can only imagine the kind of bonus features that would have been on there. Would have been really fun to watch. But you know what, guys? I'm probably gonna have to go and find something else to watch. I'm kinda sort of I'm kinda sort of in another like mood to watch even more fucking animated shit. Preferably animated stuff that's kinda sorta messed up and a little bit different. I think I'm gonna go watch my Blu-ray of Heavy fucking metal. Why? Because I love heavy metal. That's fucking why. Anyway, guys, with that, we come to the close of another reaction and review. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care, and I will see you all in the near future. Peace.